Good morning, church. Welcome to worship today, this uh, Sunday, November 28th, 2021. Welcome to all of you here in the congregation and you joining us online. Today is not only the Sunday after Thanksgiving, which is one that's a time when a lot of families are still here from our festivities a lot of times. Um, a lot of families actually are not here because you'll, when you get together, uh, whether it's a pandemic or not, sometimes you share all sorts of germs and things and uh, sound like me, although I'm feeling much better now. I was, uh, last week is when I had my little head cold. But um, today is also the first Sunday of Advent. And uh, so we're going to be celebrating Advent today. That's why those candles are next to me here. So welcome one and all to you here in worship today. And I'd especially like to welcome, welcome any visitors we might have. And if you'd like, raise your hand, and I'd love to hear your name and just uh, even just a, a brief mention of how you came to be here this morning. Uh, you know, the, the, the short version. <laughs> and if there's none who are, who are here that are new or... Oh, yes, go ahead. Granddaughter, what was your name? Elise. Elise? Nice to have you here. And you said from Discovery Bay? Awesome. Well, welcome. I hope, uh, I hope you have a wonderful time in worship today. It's a blessing to have you with us. Anyone else? Yes. Good morning. It's so great to see you again. So Kathy and Mark. Marcos, and welcome again, and I uh, hope you enjoy yourselves today. It's a blessing to have you in worship with us. Thank you. Friends, as we, as we gather um, in, in this space, it has become, um, it's something that is a part of who we are, and that is not only to be in worship in the same room together, but to really to practice seeing one another and to, and to greeting one another. And I know in this time of pandemic, it's not always comfortable to hug and shake hands and all that. So if, if you want to greet each other by simply uh, bowing and praying or, or just a fist bump or something like that, it is welcome. But at this time, I would like to invite you, please, uh, to, to rise and greet one another in the name of Christ. Perfect. Appreciate it, Scott. space of worship this morning by, um, by sharing some uh, some prayer concerns and some announcements. Um, the first one I'd like to say, oh, well, actually, first of all, please then be with me in, in that spirit of listening and, and prayer. But I would like also to, uh, to start with saying that today uh, is the first Sunday that our church school has returned. We're offering Sunday school, which is wonderful. Yes, so thank you for the efforts of our Board of Faith Formation. And, uh, and, and Becca and Samara, uh, who are going to be co-leading the class. But if you're here and you have children who would like to stay in worship, you are more than welcome to. But if you would like to go to church school, uh, that is in Pilgrim Hall. So just uh, what the ushers can direct you there if there's any young kids that want to go out. I see a couple there. So, yes, uh, church school has started today. That is, uh, that is exciting. Uh, some other prayer concerns and announcements. Um, I want to start by saying... Um, 
in order to help ensure both the smoothest and most effective prayer and announcement time so that everyone can, can hear what's being said and it streamlines it somewhat. We're really going to be moving toward encouraging folks to please write any concerns uh, on these cards prior to worship and then hand them into an usher. The usher will give them to me to read. It'll help just move things in a direction again so that people can really hear and understand what the prayer concerns are. And of course, if you have uh, something you know about during the week, uh, by way of announcement or other prayer concern, you are always welcome to send that to the church secretary, and then it will come to me, and I'll make sure to include it each Sunday. I just feel that this will make it the most effective and meaningful uh, prayer sharing that we can have. I want to share another uh, prayer today. Um, our hearts and are broken, and our prayers are lifted today for you, Michelle, and your family. Um, I'm, I feel personally blessed, and I know our congregation is blessed to have you here with us today, but, um, but more than that, just because of who you are. But Michelle's dad passed away yesterday um, after sharing some time with, with you for Thanksgiving. Um, so as you move through the, the shock and the grief and all the other things that are required of you, May you know a peace and a love that passes all understanding now. And may this church continue to support you in whatever ways you need um, in the coming weeks and months. I also want to lift up a prayer for Guy and Sandy Warren. Um, Guy got some challenging health news this week, um, but that is something that he is uh, in some ways well equipped to manage. Uh, I don't know much about that, so I won't say too much yet, but Sandy also tested positive for COVID over Thanksgiving, and now Guy is exhibiting symptoms. So they are home, they're being cared for by their son, but um, we want to, uh, to lift our prayers of healing light and love for the both of them. I also want to lift up uh, prayers for our world as it faces this latest shift in, our, uh, in the pandemic in the form of this Omicron variant. And, and may we all be attentive as we need be, and may wisdom and calm guide us in our collective response. I want to lift up prayers for Patrick Bodwell uh, and his parents. Patrick's mom had surgery this past week, and it was more complicated, um, but she is healing, and so we pray for her in her recovery and for Patrick as he takes care of both of his parents. And then also prayers for Charlotte Donaldson, which is, who is Sheila, uh, Sheila's stepmother, who had a mild stroke but is doing okay. So um, we pray for continued uh, recovery for Charlotte Donaldson. Uh, this Wednesday begins one of the first of our four sort of Advent-related couples gatherings. They're called, it's called A Light in the Darkness. And it will be, we're, our hope is to have it outside in the church parking lot, gathered around a bonfire with cocoa and hot cider. Um, but if it needs to be inside, if it's, gonna, if it's too cold or if it's wet, then we'll gather around candlelight and it'll be just as beautiful. But um, again, it's called A Light in the Darkness and it will be co-led by me and my wife, Andrea. And it's the intention of this gathering, it's, it's specifically for couples and couples of all ages, but it's a means of, of helping us stay connected to the heart and to the depth of this season that truly prepares us for the coming of the light. As we know, we all get pulled in so many different directions uh, at this time of year. So this is a grounding point, um, a place to really connect to those deeper places of the heart. It will be a time of song, uh, some prayer, open conversation, and again, all couples are welcome, and child care will be provided. And I want to also say that if you can't come to all of them, no problem. Just drop in when you're able to. You will be more than welcome. Um, if you have any questions, you can see, connect with either me or my wife, Andrea. You want to stand up or raise your hand. There she is over there. Just us after church or by other email or texting. Um, we'll happy to do it. That starts this Wednesday, the first one of those. And again, that's at 630. Also this Friday at 6 p.m. in Overmiller Hall, we'll have our last installment of these uh, live-acted classic radio shows we've been doing. If you've come to them... 
I think you've found them to be a wonderful experience. They're joyful. They're full. Well, no, it was joyful. The Halloween ones were kind of scary, actually, but I like that. But the last ones were the Thanksgiving ones. They're wonderful and fun. This one will be a Christmas-themed um, uh, presentation. And again, these are live-acted, classic radio shows. So a lot of you grew up listening to, to the radio like that, and there's such great storytelling. And it'll be in Overmiller Hall, uh, again, a Christmas theme. One of the stories is, is that story of the Christmas truce, that famous truce that developed on Christmas Eve between the, the front lines of the English and the German soldiers during World War I. Um, I'll be a part of this presentation, and I hope that many of you will be able to come. It will be a wonderful evening. Bring your chairs, bring your snacks and beverages, and it'll be in Overmiller Hall this Friday. And then also, lastly, uh, for what I have, uh, today is the last official day to participate in the Christmas miracle for Placer County foster children. So we've been looking for gift cards, or if you want to write a check to the church and put Christmas miracle in the memo line, that works too. Um, but uh, today is the last official day, though we'll receive um, gifts as they trickle in because I think that still can be accommodated. Was there anything else that needed to be said? about that, Carol? I'm looking for you right now. Oh, there you are. That's good. Okay. Um, given that today is the first day of that sort of nudging towards writing things down, um, and, and a lot of you maybe didn't have a chance to prepare for that, I want to still offer a chance for anyone in the congregation, if you can, if you have a prayer or a joy or concern that you'd like to share, it's appropriate to you know let me know now if you have one. Marilyn? Yes, this is a joy. Persimmon. Persimmon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, as I turned, there were cars turning in front, and then there were other cars going this, and there was this whole line, and all of us, except for one car, kept coming right up to the church parking lot. And I can't tell you the wonderful feeling that was in the community. Amen. So here's some more caravans arriving up that church driveway to come and participate in many of the what we what I hope and what we hope are life-giving moments, whether it's worship or some of the other things that are happening during the week. Thank you for that prayer of joy. Was there another hand that I saw? Yeah, Stephen. Uh, one just, uh, yeah, just a couple of things. Um, I Do you want me to come back to you after you're finished writing it? No, I got it. Um, okay. Thank you. So this is a prayer from Stephen. Um, and these are your military friends, Stephen. Uh, Tyler, Bill, Caden, R., uh, and there are three others, and you're just thinking of them and wanting to hold them in prayer and wish them well today. Thank you. Any others? Yes, Patty. Our computer was hacked this week, and we pray for anybody who might suffer repercussions from it. It's a crazy time, but if you get strange messages from us, some of them may not be from us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Patty is sharing that her computer was hacked this week, and um, for all the ramifications of that, and a lot of us know what that's like to go through, it's very unsettling. We hope that it's resolved in a way that's very clear cut for you, um, uh, and, and that anyone that's impacted by it, please just do not open messages that seem suspicious or odd from Patty that you may receive. Thank you. Yes? Um, I don't know if this is for her or for me, so I guess it's going to be for both of us. Because I've really struggled with this, but my baby, Molly, has moved to Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. We put her on a plane on Monday night, and um, which we've done before. She's been going back and forth. She's um, moving there to be with her fiancé, and um, she's given up her world in San Diego, moved out of her home. But sold everything except basically all the swimsuits she had. <laughs> and, uh, 
she said, you know, life. And, you know, she's been so excited. But when she came, she spent the weekend with us. It was her dad's birthday. And um, I can see she's struggling. And I get it. I mean, I've been struggling. But, um, so, you know, it's a hard thing. She's given yeah. up a, a world of living in the city to living in the rainforest. And um, what we do for love. So we pray for you, Teresa, and for your youngest daughter, Molly, as she embarks on a new journey in her life, moving to Costa Rica uh, with her fiancé to begin something that's brand new. And in the midst of sort of the turmoil that comes with any of these big decisions, I want to lift up the type of family that you helped to shape, that created a young woman that found within herself the power and the courage to step outside of the so-called normal boundaries and borders, to leap into life in an exciting way. And so I lift up what you shaped and created in your family, and I hope that that holds you all um, as you spread out and spread your wings, but that you still find deep connection and love um, across all the miles. And may she be safe and happy in this new adventure. Yes, Ken. This Wednesday at 2 o'clock will be the Spirituality and Nature Group. Anyone who's welcome to join us will be at the Veterans Park down by State Theater. So uh, you may need to bring a chair with you. And our focus will be on gratitude for the natural world. So Wednesday at 2 o'clock, Ken? At 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock at the Veterans Garden uh, next to or close to the State Theater there. This Wednesday. Thank you. Yes. What was the name? Oh. So we lift up your daughter, Jenny, who is currently in hospice and uh, is not doing well. And so we pray for her uh, well being as best as possible. We pray for the days, for the time that she has and the care that she's receiving. Um, may it be a blessing to you and to her and your whole family. Yeah. Yeah, just a few words on the Mandarin. Mandarin pick yesterday. I think we have 80 people there. 80? 5,000 5, pounds of Mandarin. Unfortunately, the irrigation system of Bill Town's vineyard or not been here, been orchard, uh, was kaput for a month in July. So the mandarins are fairly small. There's two boxes in front. Make yourself at the uh, pick what you like to take with you. And uh, thanks for the participation. Cecily was there with her, with her sturdy shoes and, uh, and clippers, and it was quite a nice day. Thank you. Thank you, Dick. Thank you for helping us uh, be a part of that. 80 people participated in this uh, this fundraising Mandarin uh, pick yesterday, so that's wonderful to hear. And you said 5,000 pounds, and this is not just from our church, this is across all over. Uh, the proof all over. to many philanthropics in this area. Excellent. Well, that is wonderful to hear. Thank you for being a part of that, all who were able to. Friends, let's hold this, uh, this space of prayer that we've shaped with our words and our intentions, our prayers, our tears, our laughter and enter into a time of silence. And in that space of silence, if there's another name or joy or concern that, that feels it needs to be lifted, you're welcome to do that. And then I'll close us with a pastoral prayer and we'll say the Lord's Prayer together. God, in this shared space of gathering, 
Help us to know that whenever the, the sorrows of this life or even the joys of this life find us, you find us too. Help us to move through our moments and our days, whatever the circumstances may be, with an openness to being found by the spirit of love, by the spirit of hope and peace and joy that goes far beyond what we know or what we think is possible. As we move into this season of expectancy, of arrival, sometimes it's easy to get stuck in old patterns. Yes, we have good intentions. Yes, sometimes things start off on the right foot or what we think it is and, and then something happens and we feel pulled right back to those places where life feels squeezed and we may be spinning and unsure. God, find us there and remind us that you never have and you never will wait for a world that is perfect and ready to receive you in the ways that we think it needs to happen, but that you break in You find us wherever we are along life's path and you bless us. You love us and hold us and empower us. So God, in this time of waiting, let us be the types that seek to be found, that trust the movement and the, and the reality and the truth of your spirit and that no matter how dark it may be getting and that it may seem, the light is sure to come for it is already here. God, in our prayers, in our hopes, in our joys and sorrows, in our losses, in our confusion, in our forgetfulness, in our anger, in our song, in our love and light and depths and our despair and our cynicism in our in our spinning ways in our in our desires in our consumerism god in all of it in all of it let us breathe and receive the gift that will truly give us life God, we seek these things, we seek your way as we aim to follow the one who showed us what that way looks like and whose words we say each week. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to invite you to rise as you're able to sing our opening song, number 400 in the blue hymnal, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Oh, to set thy people. 
standing as you flip to the back side of the bulletin, your portion of the lighting of the candle of hope prayer is in hold. We call out to you, be the God we dream. We respond by being the God you are. We discuss you and define you and expect of you, but you unravel our expectations and definitions. We seek to limit and control, putting you in a box of our making. We turn our boxes upside down. We seek now. You bid us wait. We seek obvious salvation. You send a child. We seek clear cut and easy answers. You give us hope, upside down divinity. Give us the strength to resist a culture of greed, of haves and have-nots. Turn our eyes away from the gold statues, our idols of selfishness and fear. Help us to let go of our expectations of you, so that we might be ready to welcome the child who is on the way. Amen. The lighting of the candle of hope. Please be with me in the spirit of prayer. God, may your spirit of life bless this moment, bless the words and ideas that are shared, bless the hearts and the minds and the lives that receive them, that your sprouts, your, your life, your growth and transformation might be real in each one of us. God, help us to be your people of light. Amen.
So it was probably, I don't know, a number of years ago and around this time of year that I was having breakfast with a friend who didn't grow up in any specific religious tradition per se, but was aware of, you know, all the sort of trappings of Advent and, and Christmas. And we started talking about Advent and just, you know, what I was doing to prepare you know, as a minister and what that was like and all this. And she sort of says to me after we start talking about it, she's like, you know, I always assumed that Advent started on December 1st. I mean, I just assumed that that's what it was. And you're actually telling me that it starts a lot of times in November? I said, yeah, actually, it, it is. It's the first, it's the four Sundays before Christmas. So a lot of times it happens that Advent uh, begins in November. It's not uncommon at all. And she's like, all right, well, if Advent sometimes, or a lot of times, starts in November, why does my Advent calendar always start on, on December 1st? <laughs> you know, the one with the chocolate. She's like, that only gives me 24 pieces of chocolate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, you're getting cheated. <laughs> yeah. When it starts in November, you're losing out. And she looked at me and she said, I knew it. <laughs> So I don't know actually what happened after that. She may have gone down to the store and kind of like filed a complaint or something. But it is true, Advent usually does start in November. And today, as we've been saying, is the first Sunday of Advent. So I will say this. If you happen when you go home and if you do one of those chocolate Advent calendars and you see that it has started... On December 1st, I give you uh, permission and encouragement, and actually you are liturgically supported <laughs> in one way or another, finding your way to some extra chocolate. <laughs> but you know, today is more than just the start of Advent in the church. That's because always on the first Sunday of Advent of, of the church year, it actually, something else big happens. And that is the start of a whole new church year. This day actually is akin to, we might as well call it New Year's Day in the church. Now I know, I know, you're like, why do there have to be multiple calendars, right? Why does the church have to start here and like January 1st is New Year's Day, right? Well, there's a good reason for this, okay? There's a good reason. The church calendar that starts on this day is centered around telling each year the story of Jesus, right? The entire story of Jesus. So you've got the birth story, then the life and death, resurrection, and then the reign, the, the, the aliveness of, of Christ in the world in the form of the church. That's the story we tell every year. A lot of you may realize that, maybe some of you don't, but that's what we do each year. So if we started that story in alignment with sort of the regular calendar on January 1st, we'd be missing a good chunk of that story, wouldn't we? We wouldn't have a lot of the, the well, we wouldn't have the announcement of the birth, we wouldn't have the Magnificat, the Bethlehem stuff, the shepherds, the king, we wouldn't have any of the birth story itself, right? We'd miss all that. And, and the reason that story appears where it does is because it's in alignment with the, the solstice, the return of the light on that darkest night. That's part of the, the thematic connection with the birth of Christ being in December as it is. But if we missed the birth stuff, we'd also miss this. We'd miss Advent. Advent is our preparation time for, for everything that is to come. And Advent is important. It's an important time, not just for chocolate calendars, but I can tell you this, for something much sweeter than that. That text we just heard uh, is from Paul's letter to the Romans, and he's writing it, um, you know, very directly to them, because he's asking them, says, you know what time it is? It's time for y'all to wake up. That's what he's telling them. This, uh, this time to be asleep is past, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone. The day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on that armor of light. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Everyone, you know, he's firing them up. He's issuing a wake-up call to these Romans. He's telling them that something big's going to come, so get ready. And he tells them to put on this armor. And of course, he's not talking about literal armor here. It's not metal. There's no shields involved. 
Okay, he's talking about this armor of light, which I love as an image. I like the idea of clothing ourselves, um, not with some garments that isolate or protect us more than we already seek to be, but with the garments that illuminate. I like the idea of shining in a world where there already is so much darkness. And this is where Paul's wake-up call comes in because, because before we can put on that armor of light that he's talking about, first we've got to wake up. We actually have to wake up. We have to look around and see what's happening. And if there ever were a time for God's people to wake up, I feel that now is it. It's one of them. I've found myself despairing at the state of the world a lot this fall. And if I'm honest, a lot in the, over the last year or more. And I know I'm not alone there. You know, there's a lot of us that are worried about what's, what's happening and, and how powerless sometimes we feel to do anything about it. The mean-spiritedness, the fear-mongering, the scapegoating, the anger, the violence, all the distortion of truth, all of it. And I don't know about you, but there are times where I wish, you know, I wish we could reincarnate Fred Rogers and he could just get on TV and tell us, this is how you act, people. I, I would love that. But you know what I also realize when I say something like that? That even if he did come back, I have little doubt that he'd be mocked and belittled too. There are days when I feel like I've woken up in a world that I didn't even, I don't even recognize. You know, we watched Back to the Future uh, over Thanksgiving with the kids, which was so much fun. But, you know, it's about Marty McFly, the, the main character, and he goes back to 1955, which is just like a whole different world. Am I right? Am I right? And he goes back and he has no idea where he is. He's in a world that it doesn't make sense to him. I wake up like that sometimes. It does feel like that. It's like I'm seeing it for the first time. But here's the truth as I do all that lead up. The reality is I, like a lot of you, maybe all of you, I've always lived here. I've always lived in that space. And while I, I try not to be a naive person, I don't think I'm a naive person, I do carry with me a level of privilege and a level of separation, uh, which means that I have been isolated from so much of the pain and, the, and all the suffering and struggling and darkness that, that a lot of us see and feel in the world. And so like Paul says, it's time for me to wake up. This is my wake up call. Time for me to be one of those people that says, all right, I'm going to actually don the armor of light. I'm going to do something a little different. Be something, be that person uh, that proclaims a better way in the darkness. And that's what Advent's about. It's about a better way. This first Sunday of Advent, in particular, we call it the Sunday, uh, the candle of hope. We're not talking about cheap hope here. Not talking about the kind of hope that comes from anything you might have purchased a couple days ago on Friday. I'm not talking about the kind of hope that, that comes from any politician, no matter how good it may sound. This is about real hope. Not the kind of hope that's dressed in the newest styles, but the kind of hope that's, that's wrapped in bands of cloth that a newborn baby had and then placed in a worn out old manger. And if that sounds ridiculous, it is. It's ridiculous hope. It's the kind that's supposed to defy every expectation that we might have and it brings with it then demands that, that will change things. It will it'll wake us up. And that includes you and it includes me. And that's important to note. I feel like we need to remind ourselves about this every Advent. Because Advent isn't just about waiting. You know, we're used to waiting in line to get to the checkout counter. It's not that kind of waiting. It's not a passive season. Instead, Advent demands our participation. It's asking us to wake up and then prepare for what's about to happen. And it demands nothing less of us than to be willing to put on what Paul is talking about, that armor of light today. And you know, the truth is, as beautiful as that armor of light may be, it is hard to wear. 
It's hard to put it on. Because you know what? There's so much in this world that's going to try to snuff it out. That wants to extinguish it. You're going to be told that, oh, come on, it's pointless to wear that. Because there is no hope. The darkness is too big now. It's triumphed too much, too long. Then what, are you, what difference are you going to make? And you know what the truth is? If we're honest, we're going to hear those voices from without and sometimes even from within. But I stand here this morning to say, don't believe them. Put on that armor anyway. Wear the light anyway. There's a, there's a great little story about a lumberjack who's asked a simple question. He says, well, okay, if you only had five minutes to cut down a tree, what would you do? He said, well, I'd spend the first two and a half minutes sharpening my ax. <laughs> and I think that's sweet, that's good advice, right? Preparation matters. Being ready matters. Being sharpened so that we can be effective. It all matters. You know, on Christmas, we proclaim this birth of a, of a child that would change everything, right? That's what we say. And we commit to being the kind of people, like Christmas people, that allow that light to shine through us. We'll help spread it, God. Yes, we want to bring that joy of that child to the world. Christmas is the time when Christ is born again here, right, in our hearts. And when that light shines through us. And then Advent is the time we prepare for that light. We get ready for it. And if we put it another way, Christmas is the time when we kind of pick up our axe and move alongside that, that newborn Savior and start chopping down all the overgrowth of hatred, violence, mean-spiritedness, oppression, all the fake hope. But then Advent is the time when we sharpen our axes. So how are you going to sharpen yourself this Advent? How will you prepare to, to actually put on that armor of light that Paul's talking about in a world that really needs your light? That's your challenge this week, okay? You don't just get to go home and chill for a week. This is the challenge. As this new season and really a new year begins, what's your Advent resolution? And how are you going to prepare yourself for Christ's birth and for the coming of the light? You know? What are you going to be asked to wear in this world? How are you going to wake up sharper and, and maybe brighter as a person of hope? You know, whatever you choose... Christmas is coming. Christmas will come. It's going to break in wherever you are, whatever we're doing. So our best tact is keep awake. Get ready. It's a new year after all. It's the perfect time to, to start something that breaks us open and allows the breaking in of God's light into all our lives. Amen? Amen, Amen brother. Amen. <laughs>